Hi, I've been tying fly patterns from years ago, mainly because I'm interested to see if they still catch fish, and there's really no reason why they shouldn't. Um, today's fly is a fairly generic bait fish pattern that was created about 25 years ago by the Seattle fly fisherman Blair Alexander, and he called it Blair's Baiter. Uh, it's one of the patterns that features in Les Johnson's book on coastal cutthroat trout, and I'm basing my tie on this illustration and the recipe in his book. So talking about this particular fly, Blair Alexander was quoted as saying it was his go-to pattern for Puget Sound beaches and he caught everything on it including coho and chinook salmon, dolly varden and even a steelhead. So I thought well I should tie up a few of these and try them out. Uh, so I've given them a shot just a couple of times so far fishing them on an intermediate sinking line on a local beach and I have caught a couple of fish but just small ones so far uh, but I'm, I'm definitely going to keep some of these in the box and try them out some more I really like the chartreuse and white colour combination which you'd expect to be you know effective given how chartreuse and white clouses are a mainstay around here so I'm going to follow the original pattern and tie this this fly on a TMCO 9394 which is one of my favorite streamer hooks they're really strong and utterly corrosion resistant and they have a nice bend which I think is limerick rather than the usual sprout bend and to my mind that lessens the chance that you're going to get the point up into the eyes of the, the smaller fish okay put that in I'm going to use a relatively big thread UTC 140 mostly because I'm going to be building that big thread head and it's it's easier to do that with the bigger threads so the color is olive as specified in the recipe uh, and some of that color is going to show through under the body and, and on the head so I'm just going to wrap as far as the uh, as the hook point leaving the, the back of the shank bare trim that away and rather than tie in the body material at the bend which would leave a bump and I just hate I hate bumps I'm going to wind the thread back forward and tie in the body at the front so I'm going to leave a gap of about two eye lengths for the wing and the head and I'm going to make the body out of this flat diamond braid in a pearl finish uh, same as the original and this one is mostly greenish highlights when you cut this stuff it has a really awful tendency to immediately fray apart look so you have to be prepared for that and just trap it the best you can to get it started I will be coming coming back over that first bit to tidy things up a bit I find if you hold the material towards you at about a 20 degree angle as you tie it down it wraps really nicely around the top of the shank. So now I'm going to wind forward again uh, so that I've ended up making you know a reasonably smooth base for the braid. I want the body to have a fair amount of volume to it. I'm going to make spiral turns with the braid overlapping each wrap by about half of the width keep the tension on and now I can cover up those little frayed ends at the front so I'll tie it off just there And then I'm going to just double it over and add a couple more thread wraps for security. And then trim it. Now you could leave it like that and I'm sure it would be just, just fine. But I'm going for the ultimate in durability so I'm going to coat the whole body with uh, this thin Loon UV fly finish. And you'll notice that that immediately changes the reflectivity of the braid and it brings out all those purpley and pink hues 
and you can start to see the olive showing through. That's probably how it looks underwater. So I'll give it a good blast of UV. And then taking no chances, I'm going to give it a second coat, just a thin one. Looks nice. Now, I would think this is going to last for a very long time, more than just a few fish. And, you know, why not if you go into all this trouble to make a fly? You know, I, I, want, I want mine to last. So for the underwing, I'm using some white bucktail. I'll cut a small clump from about halfway down the hide, pull out the long stuff, and the under fur and short hairs, and I'll discard any other hairs that don't look right. That one, that one. Right. Now into the hair stacker they'll go. Like so. Give them a good old tap. And Pull them out by the points. And just the final check to see I've got rid of everything that I don't want. I want the wing to be about one and a half times the total hook length. So I'll cut off the butt square at that length. And keeping them tightly pinched, I'm going to make a few tight wraps to secure them and having that kind of thick body helps to push the hairs up at, at an angle which is what I want there just checking that it's central which it is Now the overwing is chartreuse bucktail. Actually this is fluorescent chartreuse, so even better. Cut off a bit. Get rid of all the nonsense. You can go. You can go. and it shouldn't be any more than that. Into the stack you go. Pull out by the points. I'll measure off the same length as the white bucktail. And by the way, I keep a, a larger pair of scissors just for hair. They do a much better job. I just don't want to blunt the fine scissors. So I'm going to attach this clump just the same way as I did before. Tighten up the wraps. Back to front. And then wind back again. That looks just fine. And the recipe calls for making a lateral line. 
uh, out of a single strand of flashaboo on each side and I'm going to use a pearl color just to complement these other colors. I'm going to try and angle the flashaboo upwards a little bit to line up with the angle of the wing. Just try and pinch it into place and take several wraps around it. And cut that to the wing length. Actually that's just a, a tad too long. That's better. Now I'll turn the fly around and do just the same thing for the other side. Angling it downwards a little bit. And trim that one off. Very good. Right now I'm going to build up the head. I want a roundish shape at the end so I'm going to just concentrate a lot of the thread wraps towards the middle of the head. And You can build up reasonably fast with this 140 denier. That's good. <clears throat> now I'm going to put in a whip finish. Like so. And then trim my thread. So the eyes I'm using are the smaller size of the domed stick-on eye and they're in a yellowy green color. So these are supposedly self-adhesive but honestly the adhesive never works especially on a rounded surface. It's more just for getting things in place. So I'm going to maneuver this first eye into position by sliding it on the tip of my bodkin and then I'll gently slide it off onto the head with my fingertip. Go on my son. Oh, lovely job. Even if I say so myself. So I'll put a tiny dollop of UV resin on the top of the eye. Carefully. And I'm going to just spread it around and in between with the bodkin. And the idea here is just to get it sealed in place. I'm going to flash that with my UV light and hopefully that should be stuck now. Yep. So I'm going to repeat that process for the second eye. There we go. Oh, tempting fate here. All right, I'm not going to get it any better than that. Dub of resin. There it is. I do believe we got it. Oh. Okay. Leave well alone. I think that's the hardest part of the fly done actually. Alright, so I'm just going to add a little bit more fly finish to round out the head. It's looking good.
<clears throat> One more drop should do it. Lovely. And there we have Blair's Beta. So thank you very much for watching my video. Happy fishing and do take care.